Tis the season for moderation problems. I've always had moderation problems in very weird categories of life, but it's just undeniable, glaring, and abundantly clear <laughs> this time of the year. And as we are gaining upon uh, Thanksgiving, I notice my moderation problems, and I've been really reflecting on them. I think maybe in my past life, I must have died of thirst because one of my most obvious moderation problems is seltzer water. I always have to have seltzer water, no matter what. And I think seltzer water is a much healthier moderation problem to have than in my past when I drank adult beverages because I loved wine. But no matter what, I needed to have an ice cold beer. Preferably when I was drinking, it was Bud Light. And no matter what, even if I was only going to drink half of a bottle or three quarters of a bottle, I had to have it for that refreshing bubbly deal. And then I discovered seltzer water and I can't not have it. That's my my go-to. I mean, it might be also known as an oral fixation, but that is my go-to. Same with gum. I always have to be chewing gum. That's been since I was a kid. I need gum. I have a serious fear of halitosis. And I've known people with halitosis. I've known people who have gotten in my face and all I can do is smell their breath. And they've become somebody I know as somebody with terrible breath. And I never want to be that person. And it's it's not good. Probably I'll end up with TMJ or something. But when I'm skateboarding, playing pickleball, or suffering from anxiety, I'll notice that my temples, I'll chew my gum so hard that my temples hurt. With Thanksgiving quickly approaching, my moderation problems are certainly uh, evident. But that's more along that. It's more apparent that I have moderation issues with uh, stuffing, pies, various foods that go with sweets, things that go with the holidays. But throughout the year, I definitely exhibit serious moderation issues when it comes to series, TV series, books. I have serious problems with books, video games, which that's a hidden, that's one I don't talk about, but I'm going to today, as well as gifting myself, which some people might say that's called a shopping addiction, but I like to think of it as moderation in the gifting department. I'm Nikki Lynn Chase, and this is my podcast, Adult Chicken, and it's about navigating life's unexpected. These are my stories. This is my journey as a mom to two special needs kids. More recently, I had to spend an entire therapy session going over and admitting, admitting and going over the fact that I had gotten into a TV series. And I typically don't allow myself to watch TV series. Usually I play the I'm too cool for that. It's a trend. Oh, everybody's talking about that series. I don't want anything to do with it. I'm too busy. I'm too important. I have other things to do. And... I will avoid it, but mostly I have to avoid it because I'll play the cool card for, for long enough and then I I can't not see it. I have to see what everybody's talking about. I have to find out what this hype is and then there's a reason for it and then I'll be, you know, three seasons behind something and get into it and then I can't stop and so I'll waste an entire however long it takes me to get through however many seasons there are and I can't stop watching. I get that there's the term binge watching and I'm not unique in having a binge watching problem, but I feel like I might take it to a whole new level, at least a concerning enough level for me where I had to address it at therapy. Literally just last week, I had to discuss the problem I had with a series I hadn't watched. And I realized this problem I have is not new. After I'd gone to therapy, and unfortunately with the the death of John Aniston, uh, who played Victor Kyriakis on Days of Our Lives, I was reminded that I had this problem when Days of Our Lives was my obsession. I was a kid, and I, I can't remember if I was in elementary school or junior high school. I loved it from the beginning. All the cool moms watched, and my mom wasn't cool, so she didn't watch it. <laughs> All the cool moms watched and recorded Days of Our Lives, and that was a soap opera. If you're about my age, there's no way you haven't heard of it. If you're younger, you probably haven't heard of it, but 
back before reality television was a thing. It was soap operas. My era, we watched soap operas. And I remember in particular, there was one time I was really wanting to see, I couldn't get enough of Victor Kyriakis's shenanigans. And Victor Kyriakis was played by John Aniston, who recently, uh, I think it was last week, passed away. And I thought, I've got a fake sick. I've got a fake sick because I can't not see what's going to happen tomorrow. What's going to, I can't miss this. And my mom wasn't recording it. So I'd get, I usually got the VHS tapes maybe a, a day or, or two late. And then I'd watch all of them. And I, I needed to, you had to intercept those things before people would tape over them because they were pretty pricey. And people, you know, the cool moms that were watching Days of Our Lives would tape and they'd usually have like a week's worth if I remember correctly and then they'd go to tape over them but I faked sick and then when I my mom got wind of what I was doing and I got in a lot of trouble for that I might think I had her fooled for at least half of the week and then I got sent back to school and I was in a lot of trouble because I had bamboozled her and I had tricked her for several days just to keep up with days of our lives in particular Victor Kiriakis and the funny thing is when I reflected on that, because a couple weeks ago, it was a rainy day and we rarely get those here in Southern California, but it was pouring and I decided I wanted to watch TV and I typically don't. I literally will not allow myself to watch a series. I'm not allowed to. There have been a few I've gotten up, I obsessed over Sons of Anarchy. And that was another thing. I played the cool card. I didn't watch it. And then all of a sudden, I feel like there were like seven seasons that I needed to get through. And that one ruined my life. I mean, for a really long time, I wanted to unsee that. I got so invested. I felt like there was an air of truth to some of it. I, I mean, the writing was so incredible, I thought. And then it ended. And here I had invested all of this time and in my emotional energy and it was just over and I didn't like the ending and I was mad. <laughs> I said to myself after that one, I think that was the first series I'd ever watched and I thought, you're not allowed to watch series. I mean, the amount of time you can't get back and the fact that it didn't end the way you wanted it to and most of the outcomes throughout the series weren't what I wanted and I was livid and I felt stupid. I got so consumed with it. Next, Ozark. I was obsessed with Ozark. Yellowstone, same thing. I played the cool factor. I'm not going to watch that. What's all this hype? This is ridiculous. And then finally I got sucked in one day. And at that point, I think there had been about three seasons of it. And so I had to watch all three seasons in one fell swoop, which must have taken me a solid week to get through. And I probably didn't leave my bed. I'm sure I'm trying to forget how I did that. But when I went to see my therapist, I had to confess that I took the day, the rainy day, and did nothing but try to get through the morning show series, the show with Jennifer Aniston. It has such a great cast, and I'd gotten through a good chunk of it. I refused to look to see how much time my commitment was going to cost me because, it, like my bank account, I didn't want to see something I needed to unsee. <laughs> Usually with my bank account, it's how much money I don't have. And with a TV series, I didn't want to know my actual commitment, how much time I was going to need to invest in watching this to get through it all. And so I didn't know it was, I had missed two seasons and I, I had a whole other season to go. So I'd gotten through that first season in one day. And it's a pretty dark series. <laughs> so we revisited the time I had gotten a, a video game app on my phone and it was a decorating app and it seems so harmless to me I mean you buy furniture you win furniture at the beginning it lets you win things right so you're completely into it you're addicted you're hooked and you buy fake furniture or you win it at the beginning and then you're you've got more furniture to decorate more houses and then you enter these challenges and you me I felt like I was up against people and I think I painted uh, pictures of who these people were that I was up against in the decorating department <laughs> the decorating challenges and I got very competitive and then it got to the point where I thought I can't make this fake room look right unless I buy this fake couch and then I start getting into my real money where I'm buying fake money with my real money to buy fake furniture to decorate the fake house and then enter the next challenge 
and I had sat down and talked to him about that at one one therapy session probably a couple years ago where I was like I don't know what to do I can't stop playing and now it's costing me money and he said well they're made to do that they're made to hook people in draw people in and then they start you know you get things for free it's sort of honestly like a drug dealer you get people hooked and then they want your product and then you start shelling out all of this money and I was mortified at the comparison because it was so accurate and then he said you've got to delete the app Nikki and I said I I can't because I need to find out after this session if I won the challenge I just need to know if I've won one more challenge. And then it took me a couple more days where I realized you've got to delete the stupid decorating app on your phone. And he said, you've got to turn the TV off. You've got to plan ahead or you're going to feel like you've done nothing. If you, It's not a terrible thing to binge watch a little bit, but you need to plan for it so you don't beat yourself up the entire week after you've done nothing for a day but watch a series and he's absolutely right but like the video game that I wouldn't delete off of my phone until I was ready kind of like an alcoholic you can't stop somebody else from drinking they have to be ready so when I was finally ready to um well no full disclosure I had to watch the entire second season and then there are no seasons after that as of yet I had to get through that before I was willing to um, peel myself off of the television. <laughs> it was a reminder. I need to stop. But it was funny because it made me reflect on days of our lives, as I said, where I had this problem back in the day where it was not super accessible to binge watch. But that's what we were doing with days of our lives. That's what I was doing with days of our lives. And then with the video game, I started thinking back on when my brother had gotten Atari. And I was like, stupid Atari. What a dumb waste of time. But then I would find myself sneaking into his room when he wasn't around because, of course, the sibling rivalry, I wasn't allowed to play on his Atari. But I'd sneak in there when he wasn't around and I'd play a game called Pong. And I couldn't put it down. Just one more game. Just one more, one more game. And it was just literally, the graphics were terrible. But it was new and it was exciting for us, product of the the 80s. And there was just a line that would hit a ball and then you'd tap out chunks of the tiles or what have you. I'd play that for hours or what seemed like hours. And it was addictive. And I thought, these people who make this are genius. Well, lo and behold, I've been trying to get the kids into working out. More so so that I have workout accountability partners and so that I can get a workout in and they can be busy doing something. Just the other day, Bootsy was working out and I was watching Sandler. He had a swim lesson. I'm watching him swim. And I can't believe Bootsy is working out because it's lasting for like 25 minutes, which is a long time for somebody who's never worked out to be on a treadmill or I'm assuming she's on either the elliptical or the treadmill. And I go and find her and tell her to wrap it up. I can't believe I'm prying her off of the treadmill. I said, honey, it's it's time to wrap it up. You're going to be really sore tomorrow. She's never worked out and she's just walking away. Well, she had discovered you can play Angry Birds on the treadmill. And I thought, this is absolutely genius. And it made me want to go and work. I hate treadmills. I absolutely hate them. But it made me want to go and work out. And I realized I can work out for extremely long periods of time. Because now if you get on the right treadmill, you can sit and play Angry Birds, which is the most mind consuming thing. That was another one I had to delete off of my phone years ago, because I kept passing the levels, but I'd stay awake all night long playing. Nothing, nothing like a screen to just make it okay to completely put the kibosh on sleep and I would play and all of a sudden the sun would be coming up. I've got to pass one more level. I've got to pass one more level. So uh, that's our new driving force to get our workout in. She introduced it to um, her brother. So now he wants to go on the treadmill. <laughs> and now we fight over the same. There's only a couple treadmills within the, the gym that we go to that have it. And now we all fight over who gets to play, who gets to do their exercising on the treadmill with Angry Birds. So that screen time mixed with sort of the moderation problem is what really got me because 
I love books. And so as soon as they were putting books on, I think they didn't go on your phones at first. It was on Kindles or, or some sort of tablet. Again, just like series, uh, TV series, I had refused because I was playing the cool factor. I never wanted anything to do with the series, the 50 Shades of Grey series. Wanted nothing to do. Oh, these women that are into that, they're ridiculous. And then I got, I think I was gifted a tablet so I could actually, we lived in a studio, so I had to be careful with light. I mean, we were all sleeping in one room. And so as soon as I got into that, I thought, well, you know, I need to see what all the hype is. I'm too cool to get into it and I'll probably think it's stupid. Mm -mm. Nope. Again, all three books were out. So I had three books to catch up on and it was all on a screen. And I went months, well, I say months. I think I read those books in a couple of days. I don't think I've ever read so fast in my whole entire life. And I read them so quickly and I didn't sleep. I couldn't sleep. I needed to get through the next chapter, the next chapter. And then when books were so easily purchased on your phone, and you didn't even need a tablet. You didn't need to do much. It was just automatically downloaded on your phone. I started getting into another series. And then I was going weeks without sleeping. I mean, I would start reading and there was no shut off time. I'd see the sun coming up and I'd think, dear God, I didn't sleep. I read a whole book the whole night. Like, what's wrong with me? Stop. Put the book down. And so I had to completely put the gabosh on reading. I can't stop reading books, especially on a screen. And I can't not read, but I put, I made rules for myself. I can only read if I actually have the physical book. I'm not allowed to buy books on my phone anymore. I'm not allowed to read books on my phone. It's not good for my eyesight anyway. I'm old. I have progressive lenses. I can't see without glasses. And I literally can't see if I stare at, um, at words on a screen. So I have made serious rules for myself. I try to uh, follow my own rules, especially with TV series and books on my phone. And even reading a physical book, I have to make sure I stop and exercise that. So I work on s setting rules and following my rules for my moderation problems. And I feel like the one where people benefit from my issue and the recog the recognizing of my issue is the, the book reading because now I've combined that with my my other moderation problem is with gift giving. I love giving gifts. Some people might think that that's an addiction problem, a shopping addiction problem, but I like to think of it as a gift giving moderation problem. I love giving gifts to people. I love giving gifts to myself. I love giving gifts to my children, and my children have to earn their gifts usually. Even if I've already got the gift, I'll make them do something to earn it. And same with myself, I'll only gift myself if I feel like I've earned it, and well, for the most part. But then I've combined gift giving with, with my obsession for books. I love to give a good book and the gift giving that started also at an early age when when my mom growing up with my mom who wouldn't buy me anything especially clothes I mean that was just a huge when I turned 12 and I mentioned this in a past episode she said I was old enough to legally babysit and therefore I could buy all of my own stuff and I didn't get paid enough to buy awesome clothes, <laughs> the clothes that I wanted or anything to, you know, keep up with the trends. So as soon as I got to college, I saw pamphlets and brochures for credit cards. I didn't really know how credit cards worked, but all of a sudden I got my first credit card and I'm horrible with finances. I'm horrible with understanding math percentages, didn't care. It was highest percentage rate ever, I'm sure, my first credit card, but I could, again, we didn't have Amazon, so the instant grat gratification wasn't what it is today, but it was still awesome because I'd get my Thursday night buzz on at college, order myself something, and then a couple weeks later, having no idea I had ordered something, boom, here's a new sweater. <laughs> here's a new, a whole new outfit. And it was amazing. I was literally gifting myself things. I had no idea I was gifting myself. And then never really a concept, never really got to be good at 
um, paying my credit cards off. And then when I got to this stage in my life where I started realizing, okay, you've got moderation problems and you've got to figure out how to take all of these things I've got moderation issues with and turn them into something positive or something helpful. Some, some of them I just project onto others so somebody else inherits the addiction. As far as series go, I'll suggest if I have watched something, I'll suggest somebody has to see it and then think to myself, okay, feels better. Now you've you've gotten it out of your system, give it to somebody else, which that's kind of a mean thing to do. But there are certain series I think people have to see because I think they're so good and I enjoyed them thoroughly and know the kind of personalities that will enjoy them uh, as, as well as me. And then I like to have that person to talk to about them. And know that know that my my addiction is in good company and we can have almost a meeting about it and as far as video games that's become those have become a, a serious bargaining tool in our household both kids with with Bootsy you can play Angry Birds as long as you exercise so that's a healthy we've kind of turned that into a healthy addiction and then with Sandler he loves the idea of video games and so he will I will combine my gift giving with video games and that's how he earns um, video games is with good behavior and with books I love giving books away as gifts there's nothing I like more than knowing the joy somebody will get from reading that particular book and I love wrapping it up and I'm only allowed to buy a physical book like an actual book <laughs> and give it away or if I read it then share it I think that's the the beauty of of reading and it's funny because just recently I pulled all of our Christmas stuff out to get ready for the holidays and to start decorating and all of a sudden I came across my all-time favorite book which is called The Giving Tree and I thought oh my gosh that book I've been reading it since I was a little kid Shel Silverstein is one of my all-time favorite authors and I reread it and I thought I have such a different after all of these years and now having been a mom for 19 over 19 years I have a whole new idea it used to bother me and if you haven't heard the story I'm going to read it and then I'll explain my my different feelings but I think it combines moderation problems with the gift giving and it really kind of fit the whole um, thought process of the last few weeks where I've really been diving deep into my moderation problems and of course with it being almost Thanksgiving I thought what better book to share than the giving tree so today's special edition I'm going to read to you the Giving Tree, my all-time favorite book. It says here for Nikki, but Nikki is spelled differently than how I spell it. When I was gifted this book when I was a kid, I didn't have the heart to tell. It was Mimi who was one of my mom's all-time best friends when, when I was young. And I thought she had this book written for me. <laughs> and I didn't have the heart to tell her that it was spelled they spelled my name wrong and my name is N-I-K-K-I this one says N-I-C-K-Y and I, heard of, I felt terrible I thought she had this whole book made for me and they spelled my name wrong and it was funny because only about a year or two ago I had told her I still pull this book out at Christmas time it's since been I didn't get my my original copy that I had since I was little I didn't that didn't make the cut when we left Colorado but I had repurchased this and I had let Mimi know that I always remembered that book and the fact that she'd given it to me and that I felt too terrible to tell her that they'd spelled my name wrong once there was a tree and she loved a little boy and every day the boy would come and he would gather her leaves and make them into crowns and play king of the forest. He would climb up her trunk and swing from her branches and eat apples. And they would play hide and go seek. And when he was tired, he would sleep in her shade. And the boy loved the tree very much. And the tree was happy. But time went by and the boy grew older and the tree was often alone. 
Then one day the boy came to the tree and the tree said, come boy, come and climb up my trunk and swing, swing from my branches and eat and play in my shade and be happy. I'm too big to climb and play, said the boy. I want to buy things and have fun. I want some money. Can you give me some money? I'm sorry, said the tree, but I have no money. I only have leaves and apples. Take my apples, boy, and sell them in the city, and then you will have money and you will be happy. And so the boy climbed up in the tree and gathered her apples and carried them away, and the tree was happy. But the boy stayed away for a long time, and the tree was sad. And then one day the boy came back, and the tree shook with joy and said, Come, boy, climb up my trunk and swing from my branches and be happy. I'm too busy to climb trees, said the boy. I want a house to keep me warm, he said. I want a wife, and I want children, and so I need a house. Can you give me a house? I have no house, said the tree. The forest is my house, but you may cut off my branches and build a house. Then you will be happy. And then the boy cut off her branches and carried them away to build his house. And the tree was happy. But the boy stayed away for a long time. And when he came back, the tree was so happy she could hardly speak. Come, boy, she whispered. Come play. I am too old and sad to play, said the boy. I want a boat that will take me far away from here. Can you give me a boat? Cut down my trunk and make a boat, said the tree. Then you can sail away and be happy. And so the boy cut down her trunk and made the boat and sailed away. And the tree was happy, but not really. And after a long time, the boy came back again. I'm sorry, boy, said the tree, but I have nothing left to give you. My apples are gone. My teeth are too weak for apples, said the boy. My branches are gone, said the tree. You cannot swing on them. I am too old to swing on branches, said the boy. My trunk is gone, said the tree. You cannot climb. I am too tired to climb, said the boy. I am sorry, sighed the tree. I wish I could give you something, but I have nothing left. I am just an old stump. I am sorry. I don't need very much now, said the boy. Just a quiet place to sit and rest. I am very tired. Well, said the tree, straightening herself up as much as she could. Well, an old stump is good for sitting and resting. Come, boy, sit down, sit down and rest. And the boy did, and the tree was happy. The end. The interesting thing about that book is I didn't quite understand it, and I realized I would read this book over and over and over again and, and for some reason it gave me all of these feelings some happy some sad I was mad at the boy I remember being upset with the boy for taking everything from that poor tree and it made me so sad and it would make me literally cry we have a whole lot of empathy over here in this house and it would make me cry and then this this time when I pulled it out of the Christmas box with all the other books I read it and I read it in such a different light and I read it and reflected on well my moderation problems of gift giving and realizing it makes me so happy to give gifts it makes me so happy to raise my kids it makes me so happy to give everything away to my children and with Thanksgiving coming up I'm so thankful that I've given everything to my kids and yes in a way I have sacrificed everything to give my kids kids the life that they have but not in a sad poor I feel sorry for myself like the tree way but in a way that it makes me so happy and for the first time in the first year and I am now 49 almost 50 I read that book in such a different light and thought I now get the meaning of it in a whole new way and so once again full circle my favorite thing being books, my addiction being books, my addiction being a gift giver, I realize it's not always bad. What I get back is my kids maybe taking some things for granted, but all of us being happy in that I have given them everything I can to make their lives the best it can be. Please have a very safe, happy, healthy Thanksgiving. May every day be like Thanksgiving. May we be thankful every day for moderation problems, teaching us important lessons. May we be thankful for the books that we get to read that teach us lessons. May we be thankful for the series that make us 
grateful maybe we are living the lives we are and not <laughs> those that these people with these crazy <laughs> fake dramas are immersed in. This is one one time I'd like to promote moderation problems. Eat the heck out of <laughs> Thanksgiving food and please binge listen to Adult Chicken. Please like, follow, share, and subscribe. I'd like to shamelessly promote this thing and get it out there. Share, share, and share away. You can find me at adultchicken.com as well as Apple and Spotify podcasts, Adult Chicken. You can also find me on YouTube, Adult Chicken, the channel, as well as Instagram, adult underscore chicken. Mm-hmm.